Hello, this is Clover, and I'm going to be walking through the gas puzzle that was posted on February 1st, 2024 by Philip Newman. It's called I'm So Sorry. And I have to assume that what Philip is apologizing for here is that this puzzle is visually similar to the puzzle that he posted in his previous round, which if you didn't watch my walkthrough yet, turned out to be pretty challenging for a lot of our solvers. Hopefully if you struggled with that one, you got a chance to watch the walkthrough. This puzzle, even though it also uses black ratio dots, should be a bit gentler. Your mileage may vary, but either way, I'm going to walk through it with you today. So normal Sudoku rules apply, meaning that we have each digit one through nine once each in each row, each column, and each marked three by three region. And then we also have these black dots. Conventionally, these dots indicate ratios, and if there's no number in them, unless otherwise noted, the ratio is always one to two. However, in this puzzle, we're using various different ratios, so they've been marked. And for instance, if there's a three in one of these dots, that tells you that the digits on either side of the dot are in a one to three ratio, such as one and three, two and six, or three and nine. This tells us that the dot digits on either side of the dot are in a one to five ratio and so on. So the one part of the ratio is implied. It just tells you how many times larger one of the digits is compared to the other. And that's actually the first place we're going to go in this puzzle. When you are doing a ratio Sudoku that has different ratios, your first restriction is often going to be on the large ratios because many of them are limited to only one option. In fact, any ratio that is five or higher in a standard Sudoku only has one way to fill it out, one and that digit. So this one has to be a one five pair. And because the nine ratio has to be a one nine pair, we know which way around it goes. Six will be a one six pair, seven will be a one seven pair. And we don't have any others that are five or higher, although four is also quite restricted. There are only two ways to do that, either one and four or two and eight. Because we already have a four in the row, we can write in two and eight here. And this we can pencil mark as either one and four or two and eight. And this is going to be either one and four or two and eight. Neither of those contains a six, so this will have to be the one and a four. Now, because we have fours in both of these columns, this four ratio cannot include a four. In fact, that's also the case because of the one in this row. So this has to be two and eight. Now let's start looking at how some of those ratios interact with some other things we have in the grid. So for instance, we have this seven dot and then one of those digits interacts with this three dot. We can't put seven in a one to three ratio in a Sudoku. There's no um, number that's a multiple of seven times three or a, a divisor of seven by three in Sudoku. So that has to be one. And that makes this a three. This two, this has to be in a one to two ratio with the number two, but it can't be a one. So it must be a four. These two numbers are in a one to two ratio, but because we can't use two or four, the only remaining possibility is three and six. And if this is three or six, we've got a one to three ratio here. So this is either three and one, which is impossible thanks to this one. It's three and nine, which is still on the table, or it is six and two, which is also still available. We've placed this six actually, I notice now, so we can place a two right there because we have a one to three ratio and that makes this definitively a nine, which resolves that. This gets partnered with two. It can't be a four because of the four in the column, so that's a one. And the two is also going to resolve our two eight pair from a little earlier. This is a one to three ratio. We can't use a two in it, so it must be either one and three or three and nine. Note that both of those options have threes in them. And because there's already a three in column six, we've got to place the three there. That makes this cell either one or nine. Nine can't go in a one to two ratio with any other digit, so this is our one. That's now a two, and because that is a one to four ratio, this is four times two or eight. And then this is in a one to two ratio with the digit eight, so this now has to be a four. Now we need two digits that go in a one to two ratio to go into these spots. And that's pretty restricted because if you look at this column, we can't use one, two, three, six, or eight. We can't ever use five, seven, or nine on a ratio dot. So that really only leaves one number we can even place there, which is four. And that will go with either a two or an eight. Now, if we look at this three dot, it's kind of the same situation as we had a moment ago where we've ruled out a two since twos in those rows are already accounted for. So we have to use a three. It's either one and three or three and nine. The nine can't be on the two dot. And on, in this case, one can't be on the two dot either because it would have to be paired with a one or it would have to be paired with a two. 
and then there's already a two in the row. So this has to be three, making this six, and making this either one or nine. So if we continue traveling around the grid, what do we place down here? So this has to be a one to two ratio. It can't use three and six. It also can't use one because there are ones in both of these rows. So this is either two and four or four and eight. And we can make some further eliminations there because there's a two in this row and there's an eight in this region. Now this is in a one to two ratio. It doesn't have a one or two in it. It also has either a four or eight. So it has to be a four eight pair. And that puts us in a position where we can start focusing more on Sudoku. So let's look at what looks kind of geometrically restricted here. So the first thing that jumps out at me is that I have a bunch of digits up here that are not the same as the digits that are in this region in the bottom left, and they see a lot of the blank cells in this region. So I have a six and an eight that see all three of these cells, and I still need to somehow place a six and an eight in this region. So they must go there and there. Now that gives me a second six in this bottom part of the grid which tells me that six in this region can't go in those cells. And then there's also a six up here. So now I get to place a six. Let's pencil in what goes here just so we can work on the left side of the grid a little bit more though. So these are three, seven, and nine. This is decided already because there's a three and seven in the row. And now if those are three, seven, and nine, I notice I still have to place a one in the column and there's only one position for it thanks to the one in this region. These cells are going to contain four and five. I have a four in this pair. So the four goes there and the five goes there. What's left in this region? So I need to place a three in the region and it can't go in those two cells, so it goes here. I need to place a six in the region and it can't go in this row, so it goes here. And finally, I need to place a seven. Now let's put a five and a nine to finish this column, which will go just as a pair for now. We don't know which way around they go quite yet. And we finally need to place a seven and an eight, which are resolved because of this eight here. And now if we're paying attention, we'll notice that this pencil mark is now resolved by this eight. We now know for sure that that is going to be a two. There's kind of an interesting parallel to what we just did over here. So I noticed, first of all, this eight makes this a four, makes this an eight, and makes this a four. But what we did over here, we can now do up here because we have seven and eight. We need to place them in this region. They can't go in any of these cells because they're already taken, and they can't go in these cells because seven and eight see them. So seven and eight go here and here. We know what order they go in because there's already an eight in row one. And again, that's not the only way to see that. It's just what happened to stand out to me as I was solving this. I need to finish this column with five, seven, and nine. I have five and nine here, which gives me a naked seven. And I can place the five and nine in those cells. I need to place a one, a two, and a nine, and a five in this column. And that's more than I would normally pencil mark, but let's just go ahead and jot it down now that I've already thought about it. The two is ruled out of here, so we have a five nine pair, in fact, which gives us a two in that cell. And the last digit to go into this region is a three, which resolves this three seven pair. Now we need to place a two in this row. It can only go here. And so this is either five or nine. We actually have a nine in this row that I didn't notice a moment ago that resolves all of our five nine pairs. And our last digit in this row is going to be a four we still need to place a seven and nine here. This also is going to have to be a seven, nine to finish the column. This is our last cell in the row, which is a three. These digits are three, five, and seven in the column. We already have a three and a five horizontally here. So let's mark that as a seven and let's kind of follow through with that and finish resolving some of these pencil marks based on what we just placed. So now we're down to just two digits in this region. One of them's a five and the other one is an eight. These are going to be two and nine. I can place those right off. I need a one and a five in the row, which have to go there and there. I need a one and a six in this region, which go there and there. The nine that's now in row two gives me a five there and a nine here. These are going to be three and six, and these are going to be five and seven. And that's how you solve Philip Newman's I'm so sorry. Uh, Philip, you have nothing whatsoever to be so sorry for. That was a lovely, very smoothly flowing puzzle, and I enjoyed it a lot. I hope the rest of you did too. Feel free to leave us a comment, leave us a like, um, say hello, let us know how you got on with the puzzle. We'd love to hear from you. Bye-bye for now.